All right, guys, Jameson and Alex here. Today, we're going to be walking you through the mechanics of Pathfinder. As we learn them, you can learn them with us. And first up, we're going to be going over feats in Pathfinder 2nd Edition. And this is definitely going to be a join us on our journey yes. of uh, learning this process as we are, if you somehow new to our channel from this point sure. uh like you you maybe you've been pathfinder players for a while or if you're coming from a different tabletop like us and spent most of our time in recent years with fifth edition D, &D all of the shenanigans that happened we decided we wanted to try to try some other yeah. things so pathfinder learn this yeah obviously was the uh the most obvious choice i feel yes, like definitely. uh so we figured we're going to try to run through some of this you can kind of either learn with us or you can laugh at us if you already know and watch us stumble through this as best we can yes so, with feats in Pathfinder 2nd Edition, there are actually four kinds of feats, unlike D&D. &D. Yes. So, the four kinds are general, skill, ancestry, and class. And those are gained at different levels depending on the type of feat that you get. Yes. Uh, so, with those, we'll just start right at the top. Yes. So, general feats. For most classes, you gain a general feat when you reach 3rd level and every 4th level thereafter. Each time you gain a general feat, you can select any feat with the general trait whose prerequisites you satisfy. And we will stress that most general feats have very little to no prerequisites. Right. Like maybe a level requirement for some of the higher ones or maybe a base you know, stat, you got yeah, your static dexterity or constitution 14. Yeah. Or some of the higher ones you have to maybe be, like for example... Expeditious search requires a master level in perception. So nothing right. too crazy. You don't have to, it's not like a you have to have this feat to get this feat to get this feat or be this class or have whatever. It's right. They're very just, they're simple. open to pretty much anyone, and there's yep. not really much to them barring you from getting them in mm -hmm. the first place. That's correct. And again, they are separated from the other kinds of feats, so you don't yep. have to worry about you know a skill feat like picking a general feat over a skill feat. Yep. Because they're separated out, so you don't yes. have to pick and choose. From them, you choose from each pool individually, which is yep. very nice. Yep. There is also skill feats, which characters will get at second level and every two levels thereafter. When you gain a skill feat, you must select a general feat with the skill trait. You can't select a general feat that lacks the skill trait. The level of skill feat is typically the minimum level at which a character could meet its proficiency prerequisite. So with these... Um, again, so general feats you're getting at third level and then every fourth level after, so 7, 11, 15, 19. Skill feats you're going to get levels 2, 4, 6, 8, etc. Yep. They are going to lean more into specializations mm -hmm. with the skill feats, and there's going to be more prerequisites involved with those kinds of things. Right. So the biggest, like, com again, we're going to make a lot of comparisons in these videos to 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons is where we're coming from, more of our knowledge base is from that side. Instead of, you know, having a... Just proficiency, maybe getting expertise in the skill of religion, you're, you're able to pick up a skill a skill feat that maybe further diverse or not, th further specifies you into a certain area that would fall under that umbrella. Right. I mean, it almost becomes like a skill tree type thing you would see in a lot yeah, of other it can. It MP can. Uh, RPGs. If you have this, now you have these choices. If you get this, you can right. get these choices. And you can the thing that it's that's cool about these as well is you don't have to get super in-depth with them with you know progressions no, you, don't you could just take a bunch of individual things if you want or you can decide if you know you want to specialize in one thing specifically you can go down a kind of skill tree pretty simple but it yep. can give you additional options to further specialize in a specific thing if you decide to do so and that the, and again as we've said in other videos we've made we love the choice and flexibility they're in because mm -hmm. it lets you do what you want to do and the way this this rule set really is is if you can think it you can make it Pretty much. <laughs> so, for an example for this, under the stealth skill feats, if you are trained in stealth, again, there are four tiers of, right. you know, a skill. You have trained, you have expert, you have mastery, you have legendary. And untrained, I guess, technically. <laughs> but once you're, once you're trained in it, there are yes. four tiers of you. <laughs> Don't be difficult unnecessarily. Anyway. Um, so, if you get... If you, once you are a master in stealth and level 7, you can gain the Swift Sneak skill tree, which allows you to move your full speed while you sneak. Because normally you're moving at half your movement speed while you're trying to stealth and be quiet. Which again, mechanically makes sense. Yeah. You're trying to tiptoe. You can't sprint tiptoe. But this, you're basically a master tiptoer at this point. Right. I mean, you can just, you know, speed tiptoe. You know, it, it, 
it's just funny to imagine anyway. Take it. And and <laughs> on top of that, once you reach level fifteen and you are legendary in the stealth skill, you can take the legendary sneak. Yes. You also have to have prerequisite to take the swift sneak. Part. Right. So this this is a skill tree type building Further option here. Further yeah, specialized. Yeah. It's like I specialized. You basically, quit it. <laughs> <laughs> You become the knight, essentially, with this type of build. Uh, if you do take this option, you get to hide and sneak without cover or being concealed. You can just... You're becoming, essentially, invisible without having to cast like an invisibility spell. Yes, yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah, so that's fantastic. So, yeah, that's just one you know good example. There's a bunch of these, especially you know if you want to go more general route, you want to go more specialization, you yeah. have that option with the skills, which is interesting. And, again, it does not overlap with any of the other feats or you know ability score boosts or anything like that. So there, like, just to give you an idea, there are 18 different like little tables of skill feats in here. So that you yes, can, in the you, core rulebook. Yeah, yes. in, in the core rulebook, not even any other additional stuff. Right. Just in, the, in the core rulebook, there are 18 different tables that you could pick. You know, a lot of little bitty ones, so you can kind of r- well round yourself, right? Or you can really dive into one of these tables and get a couple of them. I will say as well, all of the mechanical stuff with Pathfinder is free. So yes. I'll put a link down below to Archives of Nethys. You can see every single you know mechanical thing from it for free. Mm-hmm. So if you want to dive into this yourself and look through everything, feel free to do so. There's there's plenty of reading to be done. Yes. So next up, the third variety of feats is the ancestry feats, or for us fifth edition Dungeons and Dragons folks, race feats. <laughs> That's basically what we're dealing with here. You gain your first ancestry feat at first level, gain another one at fifth level, then ninth level, then thirteenth level, and finally at the seventeenth level, as indicated in the class advancement table in the description of each class. Different ancestries do have different pool amounts to pick from, so some yes. ancestries do have more choices than others. Right, so that's one thing too. Is at each level that you're gonna get a feat. Some of them might have a level re- prerequisite, so you can choose of that level. Or if you're if you you know at level one, you can choose level one pool. If you're level five, you can choose from the level five pool or the level one pool. Right. If there so you can, like, really like two of, of the ones of level below. one, and once you hit level five, you can grab another one of level one ones. Right. So you could just have a bunch of lower level feats because you want to you know diversify your abilities. Or again, you can kind of go down the specialization route as well in yep. the ancestry. Correct. So, the example we chose with, with is the Dwarven Weapon Familiarity, which is a fun word to say. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. You gain access to all uncommon dwarf weapons for the purpose of determining your proficiency. Martial dwarf weapons are simple weapons, and advanced dwarf weapons are martial weapons. So, you're a weapon master, there essentially. You go. Moving on to level five, if you decide to keep going down this as an example for, with the dwarves... You can take Dwarven Weapon Cunning if you earlier took a Dwarven Weapon Familiarity. So you've learned a cunning technique to get the best effects out of your Dwarven Weapons. Whenever you critically hit using a Battle Axe, Pick, Warhammer, or Dwarf Weapon, you apply the weapon's critical specialization effect. So you get extra bonuses on top of that. We can go into the weapon specializations in another video to keep things streamlined on here. And finally, at level 13, if you again took the Dwarven Weapon Familiarity... You can take this one, uh, and it is Dwarven Weapon Expertise. Whenever you gain a class feature that grants you expert or greater proficiency in certain weapons, you also gain that proficiency for battle axes, picks, and warhammers, and all Dwarven weapons in which you are trained. So, yeah. just making sure that you have your plenty of weapon choices to pick from that you are very, very good with. Yes. Well, if you were to come across a really nice battle axe... You would be able to use it without you know taking a hit to your proficiency level with that certain weapon type. Right. So those are the first three. Yes. Moving on to the fourth and final feat option are the class feats. Yes. So to go along with our dwarf weapon master here, mm-hmm. we'll take the barbarian as an example oh. for those feats. So again, to with a class, depending on which class you take. You're going to have different pools of feats to choose from. They're going to lean more towards, you know, how your class functions and how it builds and things like that. So, you know, you have your multiple different alleyways you can go down and you can specialize down in certain things in this one. You can specialize down different things in this skill feat. Or you can, you know, try to steer into one, you know, 
direction with all of your feats from all these yep. different angles and try to lean into a very specific build. So you have that option to diversify your character or to streamline and be hyper-focused on specific things. The first thing you notice when you're reading through either a lot of these feats or looking for through Pathfinder stuff is while there is a whole lot going on, a lot of it really isn't complicated. Right. A lot of these feats you not. can see are like a sentence or two, very straightforward. I think you know nothing crazy. Once you get the you know the base core mechanics down, you're not gonna be overwhelmed by how difficult it is to understand the feats and other things. It's just exactly so many choices. Yeah. So the example we chose here for the first level is acute vision. For your barbarian, while you are raging, your visual senses improve, granting your dark vision. There you go. Simple enough. And also at level two, if you did take the acute vision or you are already happen to have dark vision, which is a nice little touch there, mm-hmm. when you rage, your sense of smell improves and you gain imprecise scent with a range of 30 feet. Yes. So do you s- all the better to see you with and all the better to <laughs> smell you with. Got it. And then to kind of steer into another direction, if you wanted to keep going with the barbarian, so you're really focusing on your rage and some bonuses to your senses. You have you know your weapon specialization with your dwarf ancestry feats. And now you want to go down the route that can kind of tie in back with your skill feats with something like Raging Athlete at 4th level for the Barbarian, which is going to give you a prerequisite of uh, athletics. Barring you have that, you can take this. Which, with this feat, physical obstacles can't hold you back your fury. While you're raging, you gain a climb speed and swim speed equal to your land speed, and the DC of high jumps and long jumps decreases by 10. Your distance for a vertical leap increases to 5 feet vertically, and your distance for a horizontal leap increases to 15 feet if your speed is at least 15 feet and to 20 feet if your speed is at least 30. So you're just doubling down on extra bonuses mm-hmm. for your rage and tying back in to skills that you could have taken earlier. I can just imagine, like, for flavor purposes, like, you you learn this feat, like, learn a new stretching uh, technique <laughs> so now I can uh, jump a little higher, run a little faster, you know, improve a little better. <laughs> Stretching's always important, lads. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. And if you do, you know, you know, decide you want to go on that athletic route, at level six, you can also take Brutal Bully as long as, again, you have expert in athletics. So this is just if you want to keep doubling down yeah. on that specific skill, you can push your foes around and leave bruises. While raging, again, doubling down on your rage bonuses, when you successfully disarm, grapple, shove, or trip a foe, you deal that foe bludgeoning damage equal to your strength modifier. You can add this to the damage from a critical success to trip. So you're just getting extra abilities, doubling down on your stuff, further specializing in a specific category. Again, I don't know how many times I can say specialize in one video, but Special, we're going for the record on here. Maybe I'll have, I'll, I'll have slides. like a counter at the bottom or something. Yeah. It's a lot. <laughs> and finally, if we wanted just to be an absolute furious bully, for example, if we have a master in athletics, a level eight feet, Allows us to bully our foes across the field, and while raging, you gain a plus two circumstance bonus to athletics checks for attack actions. So again, leaning into that grapple and shove and trip, you're just going to be a physical brute and knock people around all over the place. Yes. So this is just some examples to give you an idea for the kinds of things you can do with character customization with just feats. So yep. we're going to break down different mechanics, but that's going to be all for today with yeah. the feats. Hopefully you learned something. We're trying to get our heads wrapped around it. And, you know, if it helped you, awesome. Let us know in the comments down below if you, you want to see If you want to help us, comment yeah, down below. If there's let any us know. things you want to know, yeah, let us know. We'd love to read through all that stuff. But, uh, yeah, that's it for today, guys. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell notification so you know when all of our new videos are coming out. And as always, thanks for watching.